Hello world, Thomas Park here. Um, I've started to uh, sort of engage in these little um, recording sessions uh, lately um, with messages for people and stuff. It might just be a trend, I don't know. <laughs> but it's I've noticed it's easier for me. In general, on my phone, I, I tend to record my voice now and send it out even without the punctuation sometimes. It's just much more easy for me to communicate that way. And whatever, I guess slightly self-indulgent or something or whatever, but it's, uh, um, but anyway, I did want to thank and, and give an update to people in more of a video form of, um, I've had some pretty interesting adventures <laughs> over the past several years, um, really a couple of years. And I guess you could say it's hard to say when it all began. I mean, there was a point where my wife and I um, amicably separated and are still separated. This was something that we both decided was for the best for us. And I still I still get along well with my wife and we have to like terms. And happily, there was not a huge um, melodrama or problem um, when, when I moved out. Although it was, of course, sad to have to say goodbye to that whole life. But anyway, um, that was difficult. But then I moved into a, a very nice little apartment building, which then after a short period of time was flooded. Actually, um, I don't know if you all remember, there were a couple of very severe storms. I think there were 200 year storms within one week. What are the odds of that? Um, and I think it was the second one that when I came home to my apartment, there was several inches of water throughout it. And my apartment, I'd worked very hard to collect all kinds of gear and musical curiosities and books and things um, with this original idea of having kind of a studio space as well as a space that people could come crash and study, et cetera. And, but that was obviously not gonna happen because um, the water had come through. Um, I learned shortly after that, that they didn't have enough rooms for me to stay in the building without having a roommate. I admit I didn't know enough about to have a roommate at the time, so I, I had to move out. And that was just the beginning of just a series of crazy stories and half legendary attempts to do things. Um, you know, 3 a.m. climbing on, on mountains of furniture in a storage area. Uh, you know, jumping fences, uh, driving moving vans at breakneck speeds throughout the city. Not really breakneck, but, you know, just crazy stuff um, that, that happened along the way where I was uh, playing games with having very little or no money at all and still having to move. Um, I had a series of jobs. Basically what happened is a lot of the material sort of pillars of my life crumbled very quickly, often due to... Uh, circumstances I couldn't control. I, I separated, my apartment flooded, I lost a series of jobs. Those were usually related to the industry collapsing in ways that I didn't, couldn't have expected. Um, the, first, the first layoff that I was part of the entire department that I was part of got laid off because the religious industry was just quite a number of people. The second job that failed was because it wasn't a good fit. And then the, my car died just to sort of join in the sort of uh, chorus of, of dilemma there. Um, and, but, but through this all, this was sort of moving back and forth, settling down, interviewing job, this job, that, shuffling. And um, there were a number of people who sort of had to, uh, or, or I wanted to thank for stepping forward as particularly um, uh, helpful. First of all, my father who checked in on me, um, it was good to know that he was uh, there. Um, luckily, I didn't have to call on his assistance or haven't had to yet um, directly in any way. Um, but um, my sister, who um, has supported me with some, with some assistance and has always been emotionally and, and uh, there for me and a um, person of great judgment and patience too. Um, some friends, my friend Byron and others who helped me out in some ways throughout the way. Um, John and Kaya at Urban Eats, um, uh, and Sonia as well for different times allowed me to use vehicles and support in helping me 
remove um, the, um, the Abe reins for being uh, emotionally supportive and offering assistance when needed. Um, you know, my friends in Chicago, Dr. Lee and Jake and all, um, who are checking in on me, and also the Steins here, um, and just to all the people who I, anyone I've forgotten, and I hope I haven't forgotten too many people online, you know, Chris Alvarado and others who have been aware of these struggles and, and, and been supportive. Basically, it's just I lost a number of jobs and on my, my financial situation very unstable and tenuous, and I had no car. But throughout this process, I was able to relocate, um, get some new work that's now sustaining me just as of this month. Um, I'm able to go back to what feels like a more solvent pattern of spending and earning um, by keeping a couple of jobs. And just basically, I'm able to survive the way I am now um, for, a, for a period of time and a couple of years, I can I can stop um, acting like I'm in a crisis, you know. Um, so I guess you know, I just want to thank those who've been supportive. I want them to know I'm okay. I have some jobs now that are near where I live. Other jobs are decent enough, and they they're good people. And I'm making it that way. I feel reasonably healthy and playing a lot of piano and looking forward to playing more. And just generally, I'm kind of uh, drying my hair off and, and just. Um, putting my clothes on and being glad to survive that horrific thunderstorm in my life. And all I can say is, um, if you all ever have some one of these situations of losing a lot of your stuff all at once and your solvency, I hope you have good friends. Good friends can really make the difference. Good family can make the difference. So thanks to you all for being supportive. I'm okay here and I uh, hope you're doing well.